Hello and welcome to the Create with Confidence podcast. I'm your host, Taylor Hutton. I'm an NLP certified mindset coach, and I am on a mission to help you create your dream life from the inside out. Inside the Create with Confidence podcast, you will hear thought-provoking stories and conversations that will shift the way you think, unlock new ideas, and inspire you to build your confidence, attract the right relationships, go after your dream career, and transform your life using the power of mindset. I hope you walk away from each episode not only believing that your biggest dreams are possible for you, but also equipped with the tools and the confidence so that you can stop holding yourself back and actually turn those dreams into a reality for you. Welcome to the podcast. Let's get into this week's episode. Welcome back to another episode of the Create With Confidence podcast. This week, we've got a very exciting episode. We have our first guest of season two. We've got Jacqueline Beard joining us. Jacqueline, you are the perfect guest. We're going to be talking about manifestation, self-love, going from unfulfilling relationships to manifesting the love you actually deserve and really hearing your story and all the bits in between. So I'm really excited to chat with you today. Thank you so much for being here. But I would love if you could kick the episode off by introducing yourself, telling us a little bit about your background and your journey. Beautiful. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me, Taylor. So it's been quite the journey. So I would say I'm in my early 40s and I'm going to give you a a number because I think it's important about where I started and how far it's taken me to get where I am today and everyone's journey is different. But for me, I had a loving family but they weren't very good at expressing their feelings. So for me growing up, I had a lot of beliefs around not feeling enough, not having that confidence in talking about feelings or emotions or even how to regulate my emotions because we just never spoke about them. So I think to understand where I've got to now, we have to understand my childhood because all of our belief systems and how we run our life right now is all about belief systems. They're formed by the time we're eight. So for me, when I was younger, I didn't have that kind of ecosystem where I could share feelings or feel feelings in a way. We shut that off. And when I went into my dating life in high school and things like that, I didn't know I'd had no confidence. I didn't know how to express how I felt. I basically just wanted a guy to like me and for him to tell me that he loved me first because that was what I was wanting my parents to say. I wanted them to tell me I loved them. So then I'm searching in my love life for someone else to love me too. And that kind of went into a spiral of me dating these men that were non-committal that couldn't open up because they're all reflecting who I am and my belief system. So throughout my whole life, I've been the unlucky and love person, the one who's always been single. All my friends would say, you're a catch. Why are you not in a relationship? I just had all of these feelings of just, I don't know how to express I would like a relationship with you, or this is what I want in a relationship. I basically just went along the relationship and then guys would cheat on me or I just got to a point where I was just like, maybe I'm not ready for love. And then I'd had a bit of a break. I was single for many years. I was single for about five years. And then my dad passed away. And that was basically in that moment with your dad passing away, he was the one that was always there to support me, ground me, keep me safe. And when he passed away, I was in my late twenties and From that moment on, I started to become spiritual. So that was where my spiritual path kind of took me. And when I became spiritual, I realized that all of these kind of beliefs that I had were forming my reality. So I started to go down this pathway and I started to having lots of different mentors, Louise Hayes, Gabby Bernstein, The Secret, all of those sorts of books. I was basically consuming all of this information because I was such a realist and I thought life was just happening for me. And these guys were just, they were just the type of guys that I was attracting because of who I was. And then I started to get into manifestation and then start to understand, hang on a second, I have that choice. I have the power to believe something different. And I just went on a very big spiritual journey for many years. And I actually manifested my twin flame. And I'm not sure if you know what that is, but it's basically that other person that you born into this world in. So you're both two souls and you're broken in half. And I met him about three years after I started doing manifestation. So I manifested him. And when I started dating him, 
twin flame kind of relationships are very strong. And I thought he was the one. It's like I've known him my whole lifetime, that soulmate love, that dream love. And I was like, I can't believe I've manifested him from all those relationships being cheated on, non-committal men. I've met this dream guy three years into manifesting, but I hadn't changed my core assumptions around love. I hadn't gone to the root cause. So when I was dating him, I thought he was like every other guy. I thought he was going to leave me. I thought he was going to cheat on me. I couldn't express my feelings to him. I could manifest him, but I couldn't keep him. And he broke my heart in two. And I basically thought, that's it. Like maybe just love isn't meant for me. And that I hadn't actually gone to the root cause to fix all of those issues about self-worth, self-confidence. Am I enough in love? And yeah, I went overseas for eight months and I thought time was going to heal. So I did what any other girl was like, but for me, I'm going to go overseas. I'm just going to forget about this guy. And then hopefully when I come back, it'll all just be better. So I went over, I went overseas. I had the best time ever, came back and I met this other guy who's actually the father of my daughter. And he was my biggest lesson of all. And here's the reason why I have this business today. So even though I thought time would heal all wounds, it doesn't actually heal. If my belief systems have not changed, then time is not going to fix anything. I need to fix my beliefs because everything we manifest is who we are, not what we want. So I met him a couple of weeks after I got back and he love bombed me because that's what I wanted right now because my dream guy, he was emotionally unavailable because I couldn't express my feelings. So I attracted the same guy, couldn't express feelings. And then he love bombed me and I thought that was the best thing ever because, oh my gosh, I've actually got this amazing guy wanting me. The first time in my life, he's chasing me, he's pursuing me, he's all these flowers are coming to my office and just overly exerting his love for me. We're soulmates, all that sort of thing. I thought, this is amazing. I've met this amazing guy. And then slowly but surely, he started to manipulate me. And then years later, I had a child with him and he was the biggest narcissist I've ever met in my life. And I had the most traumatic experience because of that. And that was the first straw I said, to myself, that's it. I need to love myself first. I'm so worried about how a guy feels or about worrying about how to please a guy, how to get validation from someone else. I hadn't fixed the one thing I needed to fix myself and who I thought I was and what I believed was possible for me and what I actually deserved. And that's all about feeling enough. So that started me on this journey to rebuild my self-worth and self-love and now attracting incredible men into my life like completely opposite because I went to the root cause and I fixed who I am today so it's quite long-winded not sure if you're ready for all of that but it all came out that's how I got here Mm, there's so much to unpack about that but you did mention about your business so tell us a little bit about what you do regarding that because obviously everything you just said about your journey led you to here. So that's the last little part. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. So basically I work with single women and also women that have been through separation and divorce and breaking free from those unfulfilling relationships and narcissistic personalities to heal themselves, heal their past trauma and rewire their subconscious beliefs. So I use rapid transformational therapy as my modality and also manifestation techniques to get to the root cause of why they don't feel enough in love and why they have these repeating patterns like I did throughout my 20s and early 30s. And I help them understand why what happened in their childhood to why that's completely why they're seeing that in their love life because they don't love themselves. So I think women ourselves always want to look outside of ourselves to get that validation sometimes because in the way that I was growing up 
you're arrogant if you loved yourself or like we've got to unpack that one (laughs) yeah and we grow up like thinking that we need to get that validation from other people which doesn't serve us because I I don't need someone to tell me I look great or I don't need someone to tell me I'm beautiful or I'm worthy or whatever so I think women in general yeah we need a little bit more help in loving who we are first and because we're not used to it I think going back to what you said about not wanting to be up yourself and all of that kind of stuff plays Mm. into it so much. We downplay all of our emotions and everything because we don't want to be seen as the negative version of too confident. We don't, confidence is attractive until it turns into arrogance. And so it's like, where do you draw the line? A lot of the times we give that validation to other people or we look for that Mm. external validation and it's only when you start growing up that you realize actually that's really harmful to yourself by putting all your eggs in their basket rather than looking after yourself but then where do you draw the line of self-love is actually it's okay to put yourself first I'd love to hear more about your childhood and how you said Mm. your parents never told you they loved you and how that really impacted you growing up What then did you need to do to change that? Because that obviously impacted your relationships because you were always wanting to feel chosen and then you were attracting the wrong people because you didn't have Mm. that internally. So tell me a little bit about that. So it's definitely your belief system, your subconscious beliefs is everything. And what I've learned is that the love that you give yourself, the compliments, the self-talk, everything that you do, everything that you give to yourself is way more powerful than hearing it from someone else. And one of the things I teach is self-love, self-confidence, self-acceptance, self-worth. It all comes with the word self. It's all something we are the only people that can give that to ourselves. Because a lot of the time we're like confidence, I want someone to tell me that I'm great, that I'm good at this. I want someone to accept that I look pretty today. But that if you put the self in front, which is what it's meant to do, it's everything that you give yourself. And self-talk is probably one thing that I needed to change. And a lot of, probably a lot of listeners today we need to think about because I think we're the first ones to shame ourselves and we have to talk to ourselves like we're talking to our best friend. Because if you're putting yourself down all the time, that is giving more flame to the fire to actually bring in more of that back. Because manifestation is all about reflecting back to you. And I'll give you an example of how manifestation in this big light bulb moment I had is if I feel lonely and I want a relationship because I don't want to feel lonely anymore. When I'm going out dating and I'm attracting these types of men, You'll attract men that will be busy, that won't make you a priority because they're reflecting back to you what you believe and what you feel about you. They are your mirror. So if you're looking in a mirror and you're looking at yourself and you say, I'm lonely, you will manifest someone that will make you feel lonely. Like for me, I wasn't feeling chosen or shown up for or They weren't being open with their feelings. If I look in a mirror, I say, I can't open up to myself. I'm not good at sharing my emotions. So I'm attracting someone who's also not good at sharing their emotions. The other thing is what I assume is going to happen. I had this assumption, all men are players because I dated so many. So what is that? I assume I'm going to meet another player. So the mindset and the self-belief is so important. What am I saying to myself? What am I believing is true for me? And what do I believe is possible for me in love? Do I believe that love is easy to find? Or there's no good men out there? And it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy because if you believe that, that's what you're putting out into the universe, then you attract that and it just reinforces that belief over and over again. Exactly. Exactly. So that whole belief system had to change. And that's why I went to study this modality. And there's different modalities out there that people can use, but getting to the root cause of your beliefs of how it started and reframing those and changing your subconscious beliefs is really where you need to look first for transformation to occur. Because 
you manifest what you believe. You don't manifest what you want. And you can keep doing all the affirmations that you want. But if you still don't believe that love is possible for you or that you deserve love or that you're shown up for or guys pursue you because you're worth pursuing, that you're the prize, that you're the one on the pedestal, that you're worth chasing, then they're not going to do that. So it's about changing who you are first. That is the most important part. And that's what I did after I went through that traumatic separation. I was like, no, that's enough. I've had enough. It's about me now. Mm. It's about what I believe about myself because it's in the toilet right now because obviously it's not in a good place because I haven't had a great experience. I am the, and it, it is awful to say this, I'm the only person in every single one of these scenarios. All and the that's men such are a hard. I'm the constant. <laughs> yeah, and that's a hard like thing to admit, right, is taking accountability yeah. for where you are right now. Like you're the reason that you are where you are. You're the reason that Mm. you've achieved everything that you have and you're the reason that you haven't achieved everything. But so many people don't want to take that accountability and almost like they want to shift the blame. And we're not blaming anyone that you're the reason. Like it's not in that way. But once you can accept that and you can just be okay with that, that's when you can actually start to go, okay, maybe I have some work that I need to do. Maybe, like you said, you realize I'm the common denominator here. So what can I do differently that I haven't done before? Is it a mindset shift? Is it looking back at your childhood? Is it shifting those beliefs that you have about you? Because I could talk about self-concept forever. Mm, all day Forever long. in a day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like it's so important. And most people don't realize how important it is because this is just what you know. This is the stories that you've been telling yourself over and over again. And you don't realize that actually it's just a story. It is not the truth. It is not fact. You can change it. But unless you do something different, you're not going to know that until you go and meet other people who have different experiences to you, different upbringings, different backgrounds. You're not going to know that your story can be different. And so people just keep repeating the same cycle until a lot of the times, unfortunately, it comes from something traumatic happening to them that they go this isn't okay something needs to change and that's when they start doing it but imagine if it didn't need to get to that point imagine if you could start doing the work now then you could avoid even though obviously a lot of the times those things help shift and it becomes a blessing in disguise in some different ways obviously it's still quite difficult but you become a better person because you're more self-aware through that experience but Imagine if you didn't need to go through all of that. Imagine if you could just look at the root cause now, right? Yeah, I wish I didn't need the whole bag of bricks on my head that day. I wish that I learned it in a lot. That's why I said about my age. I wish I'd learned it in my early 30s when I met my twin flame. There was that I was okay to open up and then we would be together, but everything works out for a reason, right? He was there to open me up and shift me. Everything happens for a reason. Mm, but I love that saying. Very much so I wish that I could just share how I was feeling. I remember just sitting next to him and being like, all I want to do is tell him how much I like him and that I'd like this to be exclusive. I would literally, my nervous system, my body would just not, I cannot tell him how I feel right now because that's just not a safe place to be right now. And like other people would be like, that is such an easy thing to say. For me, I could not open up. I could not tell someone how I felt. A lot of men, I would text them how I feel, or I just couldn't have that conversation because it was foreign to me. I didn't know how to have those conversations. It just, I didn't grow up like that. It's just, it was, it's tricky. And just learning just those basic things about being vulnerable. The fear of vulnerability for me was just I just, it was wild. And if the feminine always needs to open up first for the male to make sure it feels safe. So it's, if we can share a little bit and open up, then they will mirror that back to us. So if I'm not opening up, they're not opening up because it's where the feminine, they're the masculine energy. So I know that just even now, after all of that work, I can sense that when I'm opening up, they feel safe. I'm going to give you a little bit more about me too. So the fear of vulnerability, trust issues, self-acceptance about our bodies and things like that, like all of those limiting beliefs. You need to find out what your limiting belief is and understand where that is. And then inner child work, mm-hmm. all of that. Beliefs a lot of changing. inner child work. A lot and of inner it- child Yeah, I think it comes back to, like you said, creating that safety within yourself, right? Because if you knew that you would be okay no matter what, that you were okay before them, you were going to be okay after them, and you created that 
self-love and that self-confidence and that safety within yourself, you wouldn't have those inhibitions because you'd be like, it's okay. And so as you start to do that work, that inner child work that you just mentioned, that's when you can start to build that in yourself that go, I'm going to be okay no matter what. I don't need somebody else. I want somebody else, but I'm Mm -hmm. perfectly okay on my own. And that gives you the power rather than putting everything onto them because otherwise you're constantly chasing someone and that energy in itself is, it repels. You don't want someone who's chasing you all the time unless you're trying to fill some void. And I want to go back to what you said about the love bombing because for you, initially the flowers being delivered to your door and all that, that to you would have been like the biggest green flag. But in reality, it's a red flag if you look at it in hindsight now. So can you give us a little bit more insight Mm. around that too? Yeah, so, well, love bobbing is in, in the work that I do with myself going through a narcissistic relate, abusive relationship and the women that I do work with, you seem to attract what you've gone through anyway. So uh, half of the women I work with have been through this narcissistic relationship and it can be a parent too. It doesn't always have to be a partner, but the love bombing is very narcissistic personality trait because they're basically wanting to manipulate you. So they, first of all, they'll want to confess their love for you very early on they'll want to say I've never met anyone like you before you're my soulmate I've got this I remember he had this song that he'd always play in the car when I got into the car and it was our song like he picked a song for us like this love song I'm just like this is way more this is 200% more than I've ever received in my life of the attention of a man but I remember those days going oh my god he picked a song for us we have a song and it was like three weeks into our relationship and also if the relationship was going too fast and yeah flowers expensive dinners weekends away yeah just a, too much too soon and in that moment because I never had that before I was like oh this is amazing because I didn't really know what was right what was wrong I had failed I had a string of failed relationships I wasn't sure what was actually right but I knew that this was very different from Mm. what I had before because I was chasing all the men before I was trying to like get something out of them Mm. I wanted them to tell me like I like you. Even that was hard. But this guy was just like showering me. And I'm just like, whoa, this is great. Maybe that holiday in Europe really did do the trick. And I'm a new woman and I'm I'm manifesting this amazing man. And then slowly but surely, the reason why they're doing that, so I answer that for question first, is because they're trying to make that emotional connection really fast so they can start to manipulate you and they can start to gaslight you and control you. And it's very, it can be very subtle that you don't realize it's happening because they've love bombed you so much. They've made that emotional connection so fast. And the hard thing for me to learn through all of this is they will target women who are successful, independent, great friends, all of that stuff, right? Because they want the status. They love status. They love entitled men and they like to choose women who are like that, not the opposite. And then they also want to, if I was going through my dad's passing, like my dad had passed away. So I was still a little emotional about that. And I remember I had a bit of a teary moment on our second date because he talked about my dad and I was emotional about that. It was really hard. And I cried in that moment for him and being like, yes, because this person's vulnerable. I can manipulate and control them quite easily because they're going through a tough time in their life. So they always want to target if you're going through a tough time, anything that's going to help them manipulate people easily. They're not going to manipulate someone who's got the confidence, it's got strong boundaries, who's got the self-love. I had self-worth issues. I had failed relationships. I needed validation. I had no boundaries because I just didn't have the confidence in relationships. So I was a perfect storm for this to happen. And a lot of the women that I work with that have gone through narcissistic relationships are super successful. They're kind, they're loving, they show empathy. They're just beautiful people. And they just have a limiting belief and a trail of men that hasn't worked out. And they just don't love themselves or think that they're enough and have that self-worth in their core subconscious beliefs. And that's what you need to change. If you have a strong self-worth and confidence, you won't attract a narcissist. You're on a different frequency. They will be like too hard basket. That person 
too hard. I can't manipulate them. They're too strong. But they'll go for that woman who has had the heartbreak, who's gone through a tough time so they can manipulate. So now that you know like those red flags and you've been Mm. through that journey, you've worked with obviously so many different women who have experienced similar things to you. What advice would you either give to your younger self or your client, an audience member who is also like going through something like this? What's a piece of advice or a lesson that you've taken away that you could share with them? The, The main lesson is to everything starts from within. So I would just work on you first, build yourself up and work out the belief systems of what you have, work on her inner child and become a woman that knows her worth, that knows she's enough and just turning within. Because for for me, I spent so much time worrying about what everyone else was doing, how to please everyone else, that I never thought once, do I love me? Mm. I never looked in the mirror and said, do I even like who I am? I'm so worried about that. Does that person even like me? Or did I say the wrong thing? Did I say the right thing? All of those sorts of things. I just turned everything on its head and I would just say, what do I need right now? Do I love me? Do I look in the mirror and say, I love you? I am So many people can't do that. And that's what I had to do. And I cried. I looked in the mirror and I said, I love you. And I am enough. And I just kept saying it and I just, the the tears running down my face, it was like my inner child was just waiting to hear that. (laughs) And another thing that I loved when I was healing was this one question, what did I need to hear as a child that I didn't hear? Oh, that was a good breakthrough. And I just, and I said it to myself because You can parent your inner child. And I do a lot of that inner child work where you can parent her and love her. You are the only one that needs to love her. Doesn't need the love around her. She wants your love. And just tell her what she needed to hear back then. And that was such a powerful question. And I was like, oh, I needed you to tell me I love you (laughs) and that you're beautiful. And that, and that's just a really powerful question. Everyone needs to write it down. That's your general prompt for today. That was, I was almost getting emotional listening to you say that because especially looking in the mirror and saying, I love you, that is so hard. And I've spoken about this in other podcast episodes about doing that kind of inner work recently throughout the last six months or so. And that was the first time I could look in the mirror and actually say, I love the person who's staring back at me. And so many people, I don't realize how many people struggle with this, but if you are somebody who struggled with this, know that most women in particular struggle with this because we're taught that you always have to put everybody else's needs before your own. And you always have to seek that external validation, but you can't actually control the thoughts, the opinions, the actions of other people. You can only control yourself. So if you turn that, all of that energy that you're pushing outwards, inwards, Mm -hmm. it change your life. Yeah. And it's so sad for me when I ask my clients, like a question I ask them is, what do you love about yourself? And she's Mm -hmm. beautiful. They're always beautiful. And she's like, I don't know. What do you think? What do you like about me? Mm -hmm. And it's just so heartbreaking. I'm like, you can't think of one thing. I could think of, I've just met you 20 minutes (laughs) in. I can think of 10 right now. Do you know what I mean? It's just heartbreaking, but it's so rewarding when they get to the other side, when they can look in the Mm. mirror, when what do you love about yourself? I love all all of these things. And it's getting to the other side, but that first initial, it's, it's heartbreaking. But that transformation is why you do it. It's so amazing to see. I'd actually love if you could give us information about where people can find you as we wrap up this episode so that if anybody who's listening to this episode has really resonated and really love your vibe, they can come and find out more about what you do and how they can work with you. Beautiful. So my business is called Manifesting Life. So my website is www.manifestinglife.co. My Instagram is at a manifesting life and My signature program is called Lasting Love. So I work with people one-to-one at the moment and I am opening up my group program for the first time this year in April and doing a masterclass in April as well. So if you're interested, they can just DM me on Instagram at uh, Manifesting Life. Amazing. And I will put all of your details in the show notes as well so you can click the link straight from there. But 
yeah, check her out. I have absolutely loved chatting with you, Jacqueline. Thank you so much for sharing and being so vulnerable. I know obviously we can just see your transformation because you've been so open and so honest. So thank you so much. Thank you so much, Taylor. I appreciate it. Lovely talking to you.